Here's another one in that same sequence. It's called Glint. You see the chair out there in the field? I love it. And the two big stones, they're so smooth they could have rolled in the ocean for years. This was once an ocean floor. I like to imagine that. The two big stones, I call them sunstone. They send sunlight out and out across the valley. I imagine my words going out there too when I speak. So I think hard about what I'm going to say. The stream passing in front of me, I watch it and pretend the words form in the stream. The stream helps me think. The stream helps me not to think too. To get here, the stream comes miles across the valley, down from the mountains, snow-capped year-round, mountains you only see now and then, as if through the night they pull away again. I would like to move like mountains, and move like the stream too, even in the midst, the stream has a glint to it. I'm trying to write in a, in a rhythm there that, that sort of disappears, uh, that the end of sentences rather than coming up, into a moment, a sound moment, uh, fall off. The whole thing is about a kind of falling off, a kind of ease I'm after that's not so muscular. That poem about the delicate, delicate eating and you know, that kind of stuff is built in a kind of muscular way. The phrases go up, up, and when on the knees, I hope we're going to down. Now, I shouldn't tell you these things, because these are sneakers, you know. <laughs> and, you know, we can make a lot of money with these sort of ideas. <laughs> but, um, you know, you've got to work with some sort of craft concept about how you're working things. 